The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities that they represent. This program is intended for educational purposes. Radio Azim Premji University. You know, when you hear uh, complaints by people from Northeast about how the region is neglected by the mainland, how we know so little about it and how so far they are from India or the heart of India, it almost sounds as if they are speaking from 1947. As the dominion plans are announced, as India is taking the final steps towards becoming an independent country, there in northeast a whole lot of actors are making the moves on chess board and there is one man standing hello my name is josi joseph welcome to my podcast the india project at the stroke of the midnight hour when the world sleeps india will awake to life and freedom episode 5 the northeast sir muhammad saleh akbar haidari who was a grand nephew of the legendary baduddin tiabji has just taken over as a governor of assam becoming the first indian governor of a british province many of you would know his family because i think one of his granddaughters is a bollywood actress So technically Haidari is now part of the British India administration not the states department but he has a lot to do as a patriotic indian to get that region into the dominion of india he has no draft of an instrument of accession actually n- nothing to work on he just has to create everything from scratch but over the next several weeks since he took over in may he navigates northeast and mind you those days it is such long journeys and time consuming to move from one town to the other he pulls off several agreements understandings and allies that today when you look back it almost seems like uh, he carried out a significant part of the state's department function without any clear directions or close consultations with the legendary leaders back in delhi like nehru patel or others yes he had regular communications with nehru and patel and very interestingly there are some very important uh, communications from him that uh, patel i mean doesn't have the time to even acknowledge till august 15th by the last week of june he is in kohima to negotiate with the naga national council for 3 days there is tense negotiations between the two sides but finally nnc agrees to a deal the naga akbar haidari accord was signed on june 28th and among other things it recognized the rights of the nagas to develop themselves according to their freely expressed wishes it's another matter that it doesn't take much time for this agreement to unravel and an armed insurgency to erupt in naga regions even as india was taking birth when haidari reached uh, imphal imagine that the landscape was still carrying the scars and whispers of the deadly world war 2 battle between japanese and the british militaries he was very aware of the geographical criticality of the region having had uh, intimate knowledge of what world war 2 showed the world of the significance of india's northeast You know, three years earlier, uh, three years, almost three years before Haidari is in Imphal, the Japanese had carried out their uh, audacious, though very disastrous, uh, attempt to destroy the logistics base of the Allied powers, and it was in and around Imphal. What felt like a remote outpost from New Delhi turned out to be 
one of the world's most critical strategic locations in that world war in imphal uh, haidari ran into very predictable problem a royal family that is plotting its way into autocracy and independence i am addressing this letter to you as manipur comes in what may be called the tribal belt of assam he wrote to nehru and patel after his meetings there with the maharaja and his council that they were somewhat drunk with the wine of independence on the laps of paramount singh the negotiations leading to the agreement were lengthy the maharaja and his court camarilla somewhat drunk with the wine of independence on the laps of paramount singh tried through in a more humble way to play the game which i see some of the other states in india are endeavoring to play but i applied suitable pressure and told his highness i there isn't want to give up he stays around pressurizing the king telling him some blunt truths of what could happen to him if he did not agree to be part of the dominion but for most part of his stay in imphal there is no outcome and finally haidari is almost packing up to leave but on the day that he is packing up to leave at about 9 in the morning so at 9 o'clock on the morning of the 2nd july when i was due to leave a rather disheveled highness came with the document duly signed the original is with me here with the manipur ruler uh, both chandra singh agreeing to come in haidari now moves to tripura tripura is still wrapped in mourning over the death of its popular ruler maharaja vikram kishor he passed away on the 17th of may 1947 it's a uh, interesting that uh, maharaja vikram kishor was an extremely popular leader but was also a man who was fond of good life so for almost a year before his death for all practical purposes he was ineffective he has had two attacks of delirium and he was never sober The Maharaja had left behind a Maharani who was a daughter of the Maharaja of Panna and they had one son and two daughters. But the official report of the political department also recorded that the king had two Nepalese wives both of whom died childless and he leaves behind six concubines and six sons and one daughter from them. The position of the rulers and official wives and their offsprings is peculiar in the state of Tripura. that they enjoy a higher status than usual in other princely states because they follow the customs prevailing in Nepal the sons from uh, the unofficial wives are called maharaj kumars but the real successor is the 13 year old son of the maharani the boy is studying at mayo college in ajmer and he was duly recognized by the british emperor by early july since that moment uh, of the death of the ruler there is far too many drama playing out in the palace and the queen maharani kanchan prabha devi is also also has her own uh, designs and strategies but all of that doesn't uh, bother haidari much even as a stand off whatever you call it is brewing in tripura on the 12th of july haidari met with the representatives of the 25 kasi states and by 16 he had an agreement with the federation of 25 kasi states he also sends a copy of the agreement to nehru uh, because technically they are also uh, sentiment tribal areas it's not as if uh, haidari doesn't face any resistance from the kasi side the legendary kasi leader james joy mohan nicolas roy is according to haidari a constant pain in the neck and he complains to nehru that roy is more interested in his party than the interest of the assam government of which actually roy is a member he thinks more of his party than of the interests of the assam government of which he is a member it would be easy to deal with him alone but the difficulty arises from the fact that he has bardaloi's ears in these matters and it takes a lot of expenditure of my nervous energy and patience to persuade bardaloi out of suggestions engineered and innuendos let loose by the reverend gentleman 
and uh, haidar even goes on to complain that uh, roy's american wife sees visions the other day she begged me to give her husband police protection which i did as she dreamt that he would be murdered between guwahati and shillong on his way back from delhi they have both it is generally believed working together surrounded by an atmosphere of sanctity amassed a considerable fortune in commerce and in other ways he also makes allegations of financial impropriety by the couple but what or maybe the challenges he manages to close the deal with the federation of kasi states and he keeps reminding patel to give approval for the agreement with kasi states but there is a complete silence from new delhi where patel is busy with so many other immediate issues around him coming up on the other side of the break so in the last week of june haidari joins hands with posi to broker a deal with the nnc But to get the entire world to agree on this one thing in the time that it was when zero actually was shaped up I I cannot get my head around the fact that everyone just agreed it took centuries to have this transition unlike place value system where there were at least four different civilizations that sort of said hey this is one way it was just us wow it was just us who said hey let there be nothing also in the scheme of things before you get to something many things let's start with nothing that's amazing it's a math 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 world with divakar coming soon only on radio azim premji university it's important to note that the northeast that uh, Haidari was dealing with comprised of the province of Assam, the princely states of Manipur and Tripura, 25 Khasi chiefdoms in the Khasi Jaintia Hills. Some tribal districts of Assam were in uh, uh, were in very similar position to other princely states because since the mid 1800s uh, British had followed a policy of non interference in administrative and legal matters. and with the government of india act of 1935 these tracts were given the legislative designation of excluded areas the excluded areas irregular but continuous block on the borders of, and with assam along the northern boundary with china are the balipara and sadia frontier tracts now they are part of anadhar pradesh along the eastern boundary with burma were the naga hills district now the anga now nagaland and the lushai hills now mizoram and the north kachar subdivision now dima hazao district in assam these were administered by the assam governor but practically they were fortified by invisible lines drawn by the british ostensibly to protect these tribes but also to maintain some amount of control on them in 1873 the inner line system was introduced which meant that outsiders could not enter certain areas without a permit and beyond that line tribes were largely left to their own devices although frontier political offices were allowed to exert some influence there were also partially excluded areas they were garo hills the khasi and jaintia hills and mikir hills here to the governor reigned supreme and uh, all of them had one legislator each in the assam assembly and there was some amount of ministerial administration over them the 25 khasi states that we were talking about they were ruled by various chieftains and they had formed this loose federation in the 1930s the princely state of manipur was ruled by a hindu maharaja whose power largely was limited to the plain areas the hills which were populated by the nagas and kokis were administered by officers under the governor Finally, in the small state of uh, Tripura, the Manikya dynasty ruled, but they were also facing growing demand for responsible government since the 1930s. Of all these diverse forces, I think the the most complex and challenging set of people was uh, Nagas. Nagas is not just a single. tribe is actually there are roughly 60 naga tribes they are settled across the mountainous borderlands stretching from the brahmaputra valley to manipur to burma 
they were extremely diverse with their own separate customs and languages some like the konyakan sima were so warlike they still conducted head hunting raids while others like the ao were deeply influenced by the american baptist missions who had made in roads by the 1870s every naga village uh, functioned like a little state and almost all of them followed democratic principles but a few were run like autocracies so in the last week of june haidari joins hands with posi who is uh, the tax collector of the nagas and and trusted by them to broker a deal with the nnc so it's a three day conversation negotiations and uh, very tense conversation for most part the first eight points of the broad agreement uh, were not controversial in fact they were uh, downright generous from an indian perspective uh, which includes uh, recognizing the right of the nagas to develop themselves according to their freely expressed wishes it also conceded a large degree of autonomy in judicial legislature and executive matters it provided for the chin hills and uh, inner line regulations to remain in force but what really jinxed the agreement was a ninth point which pertained to uh, demand regarding a 10 year interim government and on the second and third day mostly the discussions were centered around it haidari was not willing to let the naga delegation decide that uh, they will have the right to unhinge from india in a decade if they want and nagas had a problem with the very loose wording that haidari was offering he had suggested that the assam governor as agent of government of india would be responsible to ensure the observance of the 10 year agreement after which he suggested the naga council will be asked whether they require the above agreement to be extended for a further period or a new agreement regarding the future of naga people arrived at on 27th of june by 5 pm the the negotiations were getting very frustrating and haidari called time out and he told the nagas to discuss among themselves and and within the naga grouping the aos thought it was a good deal while the angami is express reservations by 8 pm that evening ali bai imti one of the representatives uh, walked into the governor's camp where he is waiting with posi and uh, he says the point was acceptable and what is to be noted is that haidari by the hour was actually trying to rework the ninth point and on the last day of the agreement he wanted to he wanted the close to read that after 10 years the nagas would be free to form any kind of government they wanted provided they did not join pakistan or burma which was immediately vetoed by the nagas as the final agreement uh, is being agreed upon to the terms haidari doesn't mind making a last warning to the naga negotiators saying that after 10 years they may play around with the administrative patterns within india if they wanted but he warned if they try to secede they shouldn't be surprised to have force used against them the funny part of this is that uh, what uh, haidari and his team thought was a huge success and what nagas thought was an acceptable deal wouldn't pass the constituent assembly's uh, approval it ref- the constituent assembly refused to ratify the agreement believing that haidari was too soft on the nagas at a time when the hardline nagas thought that nnc delegation was too soft with haidari just a week after haidari's uh, kohima visit another sub committee under bardaloi would start further meetings and negotiations and the naga haidari accord would unravel whatever may be the reasons behind it it could be ranging from the inability of the delhi leaders to understand the complexities to deal with and and respectfully with a complex group of tribes with long glorious history and very strategic location or the jubilee and constituent assembly's determination to have as standard consistent agreement with every one coming into the dominion the fact is that the biggest challenge to the idea of a united india after partition 
would come from two sides kashmir and the naga region while kashmir is far more simpler and easy to manage and new delhi uh, deals with it swiftly the naga problem festered and continued and continues to haunt democratic india for all these decades that was episode 5 the northeast make sure you check out the show notes where we share the show resources and acknowledgments and don't forget to subscribe or follow our channel for future episodes Radio Azim Premji University